Hello everyone. I'm going to, I realized that Instagram is going to send some notifications that this video is live. So I will wait just a little bit to let that happen and see if um, we have some people join live. So welcome if you are going to join live. Welcome if you are watching this back on the replay. Uh, my, hello, hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Katie. You might better re best recognize me on this platform and on this page as someone who typically reads stories to children and um, sings wheels on the bus. But today we are talking about your pantry and how to really stock your pantry full of some staples, whether you are eating at home or on the go. And if you have watched this program in years past, when I have presented, it's usually called something like Foodie on the Go. Um, as we always partner, the library always partners with Putnam Tastes and Talents. Hello everyone for a food-based program here in March, but this year it's a little different, right? You might not be eating out the same and you might be wanting to prep some meals better in your home. So that is what we're going to talk about. How to get your pantry stocked and ready and how to make, I even have examples for you, three examples of meals uh, that you can make out of all these pantry staples. And at the end of today's program, I will also be attaching in the comments a PDF for, or I'm sorry, I think it's a PNG. You should be able to either save it to your phone or print it, but it is um, called Prepping Your Pantry, the name of this program. And we have all of the different categories that we're going to be going over, the meal ideas and everything right for you. So you can print this out, stick it on your fridge, stick it on the inside of your pantry um, and use it when you go grocery shopping or how to get some meal ideas. So this will be again for all those joining. Hello, my name is Katie and this will be in the comment section at the conclusion of this program. So as I said probably three times now, my name is Katie. I do work here at the Putnam County Library and you might know me more as someone who sings wheels on the bus or reads story to children, but my life before the library, my profession before that is my husband and I own a gym and we own a gym called Smith Fit Training. It is in um, the heart of downtown Hurricane and I was a holistic wellness professional. That was my big umbrella for the many hats that I wore pertaining to holistic wellness. And one of those that uh, I really am passionate about is nutrition and feeding your body well and creating healthy eating that can be sustainable for your life and your, your entire life and your lifestyle. So, um, why should you listen to me fast? I mean, I'm sorry, rewind about nine and a half years ago and I was diagnosed with celiac disease, which is an autoimmune disease of your duodenum, which is the first part of your small intestine. And upon that diagnosis, it was immediately, I was immediately told you need to have a gluten-free lifestyle. And I think I had some, a few other things that I was lacking in because celiac disease affects the absorption of the nutrients that you feed your body. So food was the first thing that changed my health was going gluten free. And that is completely bio individual as is everything that we will be talking about today. What works for someone may not work for you. And it's all about tuning into your body and learning and listening um, to what best suits you. So upon that diagnosis, I went gluten free felt significantly better than I did pre-diagnosis. And then throughout the years, um, has I have really tailored my nutrition to serve my body best. Um, and in that, I have helped other people along the way. I've done many, many food slash holistic wellness-based programs here for the library. Many you can find in our, our archives over the last year here on Facebook. But today is all about prepping your pantry and how to stock your pantry full of good, healthy, nutritious things that make healthy eating fast and simple and approachable. So um, before we get started, there are five categories that I've broken down. And again, don't feel overwhelmed. Just kind of take this in. Listen, we're going to try to make this program around 30 minutes. I know you all are probably screened out. It's been a wild and crazy year. And I know the last thing that you want is some type of homework 
So again, I've already done the work for you. Everything that we talk about today will be in this PDF that will be in the comments afterward. So the first thing I've done in this um, document that you will be able to see is I've broken down things into proteins, carbohydrates, fats, veggies and fruits, and fun and flavor. So I have actually taught entire um, programs before on how to make a plate and how I make a plate based on whatever your eating nutrition needs are. So whether you're gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, vegetarian, plant-based, pescatarian, meat eater, whatever it is, um, this can be applicable to you no matter what. So I've broken things down into these five categories for a few reasons. Proteins, fats, and carbs are your three macronutrients. Veggies and fruits, while yes, technically carbohydrates, I put them into a different category, um, and I think you might be able to see why later. And then the final category is fun and flavor. So your herbs, your spices, your pancake mixes, things that you may not be eating on an everyday basis, but you kind of always want to have stocked because you don't know when you might want pancakes for breakfast one morning. So everything listed in these five categories are going to be things that are long lasting and you can buy in different price categories. So whether you like a boxed craft macaroni and cheese or you're someone like me who requires a gluten free and I do require a dairy free as well, a more expensive kind of like Annie's mac and cheese, this is going to be applicable to your budget as well. And that is what I love about breaking these things down like this. So we'll start with protein. Protein, I like to think of as like satiation. It's gonna be that bulk, um, not necessarily in a caloric way, but it's gonna be that bulk that really helps to hold the fuel of your digestive fire and to get that um, to last you through your next meal, which is also fats, but we'll get there in a second. So proteins are things like a canned meat. So tuna, salmon, canned chicken. Um, I love oysters. I love smoked oysters and olive oil. I always have those in my pantry. Um, and if we are moving away from more, you might think of meat um, as animal product, as a pantry staple. And none of these are going to be refrigerator staples, okay? So none of these require really refrigeration. You might get some more uh, shelf life out of things like apples um, if you store them in the refrigerator, but these do not require refrigeration. If you end up loving this program, I will encourage you to drop a comment and let me know because uh, I can do a refrigerator staples as well. So if you like this pantry staples, let me know and we can do a program in the future on refrigerator staples, but this is just for our pantry. So no refrigeration required. So you might be thinking things like the canned meat for protein, right? That's immediately where our mind typically goes when we're talking about protein sources. But don't forget about beans. Beans are rich in protein. So things like a tri, a tri blend bean, that's one of our favorites from Kroger. Uh, you can find pinto beans, black beans, navy beans, lentils, chickpeas, uh, which are also garbanzo beans, if you didn't know that. Um, protein rich beans. Always have those in your pantry. They can be a quick substitute. Um, you can heat them up. You don't even have to heat them up usually if you don't want to or don't have the ability to. So always keeping canned beans around. Another super quick option, jerky. A dehydrated type of jerky. If you're from West Virginia, you probably have tried deer jerky. You might even still have some in your pantry, um, but jerky. Things also like chia seeds, quick protein bars, snack sticks, like the tall, um, I used to, the tall sticks, and I used to also get Epic bars a lot. Um, those are a different kind of snack stick. It's in more in a, a bar, but it is actual um, meat in a little bar, Epic bars. Things like broth. Broth can be really rich in protein. So whether that's bone broth made from maybe free range chicken bones or grass fed bones, um, or even a veggie broth can add some flavor and some protein to your meals. So carbohydrates, we had proteins. Now we're just moving on to carbs. And carbs are those quick sources of fuel for your body. And if you think about a fire, think about kindling, right? So kindling gets our fire started very quickly, but it might burn out. So we have to add things like 
protein and fat, which are like logs. So carbohydrates, you might be immediately thinking of pantry staples like oats, rice, flowers, which we'll talk about flowers. I have them in a different category, but I don't want you to forget whole food sources of carbohydrates like regular potatoes and sweet potatoes. They will last in your pantry if stored properly and away from things like onions for quite some time and having them available at any moment to throw into maybe a soup or to make a quick side of mashed potatoes or adding um, a nice filling warm sweet roasted sweet potato to your meals is going to be a great option so don't forget about those while not as long lasting and pantry stable as maybe rice or oats i always keep those in the pantry also in the category of rice you probably live a quick lifestyle right you might be busy you might be caught oh no i don't have anything for lunch plan today. Keep some minute rice in the refrigerator. I'm sorry, in the pantry, not the refrigerator. Keep some minute rice in the pantry and you can just grab that, take with you. You can use a microwave. It might cost you some, a little bit more money because it is priced for convenience. It might cost you in the means that it has more ingredients and you might not love using a microwave, but that will be quick and easy and keep you on track to eating healthy and nourishing your body according to your goals. And finally, I have a different type of carbohydrate or grain, which is quinoa. And quinoa is a higher protein grain. It looks like birdseed when you buy it in the package, but once you cook it, it fluffs up and it has like a rich nutty flavor. So that will keep variety in your meals. You can choose a different protein from one of these categories. You can choose a different carbohydrate to give your meal a little bit of a different flavor. And the other thing I love to have in every meal, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Healthy, good for you fats. You probably might immediately think of olive oil, and so do I. I love olive oil and a simple maybe balsamic vinegar on top of a salad. I'll tell you another trick. I love eating olive oil with warm white rice. It's I know it sounds silly, but it is so delicious. It's one of my favorite quick go-tos. But avocado oil, a fantastic oil to bake or cook in. You could bake your sweet potatoes in that avocado oil or maybe make a homemade dressing. Coconut oil. I love using coconut oil to make popcorn in my Instant Pot. If you have an Instant Pot, and I know Instant Pots have gotten super popular in the last few years, one of my favorite uses is homemade popcorn. You can find, I'm sure, a YouTube video. That's how I found to do it, um, and that's what I love using coconut oil for. You'll also find on this list, once you are able to see it, things like peanut butter, nut butter, seed butters, tahini, which is technically made out of sunflower seeds, but usually when you think of nut butters and seed butters, you think of sunflower seed butter or almond butter. Um, things like whole nuts. So maybe you grab a handful of almonds or a handful of cashews. Maybe you chop up some walnuts and throw them on a salad or throw them in a baggie for when you get a little bit. I like to uh, say I get a little hangry, a little hungry and angry. A quick little, um, a quick serving of nuts will help to kind of curb that hunger because Fats are like the logs in our fire. So we had the kindling from the carbohydrates and fats are going to help hold that meal, hold that satiation, get you to your next meal. And then we have two more categories. So like I said, uh, we had protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Those are your three main macronutrients. What I have created two other categories for are veggies and fruits and fun and flavor. Because in my mind, while veggies and fruits are technically carbohydrates, I like to think of them as essential sources of vitamins and minerals. That's really where you're going to get that those rich sources of fiber, not that grains do not have that, but think fiber, think ma um, macro, micronutrients, I'm sorry, not macronutrients, think micronutrients, think the things that are really going to give you big bang for your buck, things that are included in protein, carbs, and fats, but maybe not as concentrated and rich as in veggies and fruits. Now you might be thinking veggies in the pantry and veggies that are quick. Don't forget there are canned vegetables. While maybe not the most nutrient dense, they are still veggies. They're still going to get on your plate. Also think about canned fruits or fruit 
cups. And what I want you to really pay attention for when you buy these in the store are their sugar content. Does it have added sugar in it? What is it stored in? Is it in syrup? Is it in water? Really pay attention to those and know that no matter what, the whole fruit is probably going to be better for your body. Not to say that it's the best option all the time, but it's probably going to be a little bit more nutrient dense for your body than say something like a canned or a fruit cup. Now here is, I don't usually let this secret out, but I'm going to let it out tonight. And that is baby food. Baby food is one of my best kept secrets when it comes to staying stocked in your pantry or food on the go. They make them now in, in squeeze packets. You can get them with broccoli, spinach, pear, banana. You can find some really great, great squeeze tubes of baby food that make eating it on the go easier. One of my other things that I like to do is um, sweet potatoes. Uh, when we've been traveling with celiac disease, sometimes it's really difficult to find a place that's safe and um, an option for me to eat. So I always like to go in and I can always find some baby food to get some quick veggies or fruits in and without any kind of cooking uh, material. So other things to think about that I categorize in the veggies and fruits, garlic and onions, my home, never goes without garlic and onions. You can make a meal next level just by sauteing some onions or maybe chopping raw red onion and putting it in a salad um, and sauteing some garlic, roasting some garlic. There are so many options. And like I said, out of all five of these categories, I'm gonna go over three meal options, although there are so, so many um, available from just this small, non-exhaustive list. So, also, another option would be apples, oranges. Those tend to last longer. You can store them outside of the fridge. They will last longer inside of the fridge, but they will stay uh, fresher longer than something like bananas. And that's the only reason I didn't include something like bananas on this list. And the final category is fun and flavor. Now, these are the things that I maybe don't buy as often. I'm only going to buy um, a jar of cinnamon maybe once every six months, and I use a lot of cinnamon maybe once every eight months, and I'm telling you I use a lot of cinnamon. So these are things that I'm not gonna be buying as frequently, but cannot be without. Things like flowers and mixes. So I like to always keep either a cake mix, a brownie mix, some sort of sweet mix in my pantry at all times, because you never know, when is a friend maybe gonna pop up and have a birthday? Um, when do you maybe just have a hankering for a sweet? Better to have them there. You have the ingredients to make it as best as I can. And again, on the quality spectrum, you can either buy a Betty Crocker or maybe you're going to buy something like a Simple Mills. That is your choice. Tailor it to your budget and your dietary needs. And then you can make, weigh those options and make that choice. But I always like to keep a sweet treat mix in the, in the pantry. I also like to keep flowers like cassava flour. If I want to make homemade burritos, I can make a quick burrito. It's olive oil, cassava flour, water, and salt. Throw that in and I can have fresh burritos. Um, I always like to keep things like arrowroot flour because it can be, again, this is tailored to my gluten-free needs. You might be able to use uh, wheat flour, a regular all-purpose flour, and I can't do that. So I like to keep um, those kinds of substitutes on hand and Arrowroot powder makes a fantastic dry shampoo. If you have lighter hair, if you have darker hair, add a little bit of cocoa powder. It's an excellent dry shampoo. Anywho, I always like to keep things like honey as a whole food sweetener versus sugar. And I actually just looked at this and I forgot, I don't even have sugar on this list. And that's because sugar isn't the first thing that hits my mind. Maybe you are a baker and you absolutely have to have sugar in your pantry at all times. Like I said, this list is not the end all be all. Add what you need to fit your lifestyle and your needs. But I do like to keep things like honey and maple syrup. Now I keep my maple syrup in the refrigerator because it's pure maple syrup um, and I like it to last long, so I keep it in the fridge. But honey, oh, I love having honey on hand. You can use it in tea for a sore throat. You can use it in baked goods. You can make sauces out of it. It's such a go-to ingredient. 
don't forget things like crackers and cookies. We may, when we think of healthy eating, I think things like crackers and cookies tend to be pushed to the side. But this is your real life. This is, this is life. This is not something that's meant to be adhered to for three days, three weeks, a month, two months. This is meant to be small steps to really enhance the health of you. So don't forget cookies and crackers. Um, then <laughs> on the opposite note, I have things like seaweed in this column, which is kind of strange, right? But they do make really nice seaweed snacks. They're really rich in iron. You can add that to soups. Some people, I am not one of these people, can eat the seaweed straight. Again, I'm not one of those people, but I do have friends who can eat seaweed straight, so that's a really quick nutrient-dense thing to keep in the pantry. On-the-go bars, Lara bars. I know a lot of people like Luna bars or Cliff bars. Um, perfect bars. Those are all really great things to have on hand that you can just grab, have a quick meal before you get hangry. We don't want anybody getting hangry. Then we have things like drinks coffee and tea. I always have some coffee beans and always have some tea in my pantry. I have a whole tea chest because tea is so delicious, one, and so good for your body. Um, and then you can tailor those teas to your certain needs, do some reading, see what the tea claims it helps with, and then you can build your tea collection based off of that. I also like to keep things in the drink line as coconut milk. It is pantry safe. You can make delicious meals like curry. You could maybe use it as coffee cream. You can whip it up as whipped cream. Always, it has a fantastic expiration date on it, meaning it will last quite a long time. And you can use it in lots of different recipes as either a substitute or the, the main ingredient. I like to keep apple cider vinegar at all times. One, for my digestion. Two, uh, you can put it in coleslaw. You can, um, make a dressing out of it. There are so many things that you can do with apple cider, apple cider vinegar. That's a quick Google search and you'll have lots of ways to use that. Um, and then finally, herbs and spices, which we kind of talked about. Things you're not gonna buy super often, but can change a meal drastically. And if you are watching and you didn't see earlier, if you enjoy this program and you would like to see a refrigerator staple so that you can hang it up by your pantry staples, let me know because I will talk about the curry paste that I keep in my refrigerator at all times and it just elevates a meal and makes it considerably more special than it was before the curry paste. <laughs> and the last thing I'll mention in fun and flavor are things like soups. So for example, personally today, uh, my husband and I were out of town this weekend so when I came back I didn't have any leftovers to take for my lunch. So what did I do? I grabbed a quick bag of ramen, which is, you may not think ramen is nutrition, nutritious, but this is not the standard ramen that you are probably accustomed to seeing. Um, it's made by a company called Lotus Foods. It is gluten-free. It has fantastic ingredients to it. It's absolutely delicious. And I grabbed an avocado. I always have avocados because you can make so many meals, of which I will show you one in just a minute. And I didn't have a meat or necessarily protein source, but again, this is real life. This is what I had in front of me and it kept me from getting hangry and it gave me a lunch to have. So I just made the ramen quickly in the back four minutes to make that, added an avocado and my tummy's starting to growl now, but that's okay because I'll be having dinner soon. So now you might be looking, when you see this PDF, you might be looking, how in the world do I make, oh, I forgot to tell you, lemons because that, that's gonna be important in a second. I have lemons in the fruits and veggies as well because they last forever, whether in the fridge or out. But you might be thinking, how in the world could I even make these individual ingredients as a meal? So I thought of three quick meals for you. I am sure, let me see. I can't imagine that any of these meal would take more than five minutes, definitely less than 10 minutes to make these three meals. And this first meal I have eaten so many times. And because this is not a refrigerator staples, again, if you would like that, let me know and I will be happy to come up with some refrigerator staples. Um, I would put this on a bed of arugula, especially around the springtime as we're transitioning from winter because this is a little hardy to spring that fresh arugula on it with um, some lemon juice is just absolutely divine. But is canned salmon. I really prefer the wild planet canned salmon. It's sockeye salmon. It is so, so yummy. 
avocado. So avocado can often be replaced, used as a replacement for mayonnaise, especially in something like this. It's going to be either like a tuna or salmon salad. So canned salmon, avocado, fresh chopped either white or yellow onion, a chopped gala apple. I'm telling you, this is good with a squeeze of lemon juice. And then you mix that up just like you would a tuna salad. And like I said, you could eat that alone. That would be a very quick to go nutri nutrient dense meal, or you could put it on a bed of arugula, which is going to give that crisp crunch and so many nutrients in the raw um, greens of the arugula. And then a Lara bar for dessert. So that's gonna, ha my favorite is the peanut butter bar. That's gonna, or I'm sorry, the peanut butter cookie Lara bar. And that's just peanut, salt, and dates. So you could have that as a, a sweet dessert. Meal two is also could be lunch or a quick dinner. And that, if you're not a fish fan, don't worry. Wild Planet also makes a canned chicken breast that I really, really enjoy. So you could do canned chicken, flavored minute rice. So again, this is gonna be so, so quick. You can get so many different varieties of minute rice. Then top that with a drizzle of olive oil or tahini, which you can often find in to-go packs if you needed to make this super, super quick. And then a baby food squeeze packet. And I, if you're not sold on the baby food yet, that's okay. Um, I have used this trick plenty, plenty of times, but find one that is gonna be vegetable-based. So often it will be like a spinach with uh, maybe broccoli and pear going to be something like that but there you get fruits and veggies um but in order to get that vegetable in that makes sense with that type of a meal look for that and then meal three is more of a breakfast slash snack slash you can eat my husband's eaten this meal for dinner before because he just didn't feel like cooking and I didn't feel like cooking but I wanted to also include one a meal for you to show you the variety that you didn't have to be a meat eater. This could be, you could totally add some boiled eggs on the side or an animal product eater. You could totally add some boiled eggs on the side, pour some milk or some plant-based milk into this, but it's cooked oats with almond butter topped with some flax and chia seeds. So you're getting lots of fiber, lots of plant-based omegas. You're getting protein with fruit. So I have like blueberries, but those technically aren't in your pantry probably. But you could chop either an apple or maybe a banana if you did have those. Put that on top of your oatmeal. Have it with a side of coffee or maybe some green tea for in the morning to really get uh, the green tea is going to help make you more alert, but not too much caffeine that you're going to get jittery and maybe crash later. And then an optional source of protein or flavor would be to add a flavored protein powder. So you might add a chocolate protein powder to enhance that almond butter or peanut butter that you used. Uh, you could, I've seen chai flavored, hi, hi. Um, I've seen chai flavored protein. I've seen vanilla flavored protein in a range of, like I said, plant-based to animal product based. So that would be a fantastic way to get that protein and really round out that meal. So as you can see, those are three simple meals from just these few ingredients. And it's almost like a puzzle. You can sit with this and pick and choose from each category. And I think the ideas will just start going for you. Again, that will be in the comments after this is concluded. And I really hope that you can utilize it to create some meals for next week. Maybe you can use this as a springboard inspiration for getting your grocery list together. And then what I want you to remember is this is not an exhaustive list, but is meant to be that springboard and inspiration to making those healthier choices. Make them simple and easy. Make them quick, start somewhere. It just takes one step and then one step can lead into another, which can lead into another, which can lead into another. And imagine if you just took one small step once a week that's four small steps to being a healthier you in a month and then 52 steps in an entire year and imagine if you just stuck with those and with any kind of healthy lifestyle you're going to eat a cookie or a piece of cake and the point is do not beat yourself up about that this is life life is meant to be enjoyed and cookies and cake are enjoyable so don't feel guilty about that 
So I hope you can use these columns to put together a simple nourishing meal based on your personal needs, your personal tastes, and your personal goals. Remember that those three things are not going to be the same for everyone. They're not going to look the same for everyone, but tailor this to you. Take care of you. So thank you all for tuning in. Like I said, if you enjoyed this program, it will be up to view later. I will save this to the library's feed. If you liked it, let me know. Leave a comment and let me know if you would like um, a refrigerator staples and I will be happy to get that together and present that to you sometime in the future. Remember that this program was brought to you by uh, the Putnam Library and Putnam Tastes and Talents which is going on through the entire month of March. We do still have, I think it's my story time actually, it's going to be a cookie story time later this month in partnership with Putnam CBB and Putnam Tastes and Talents and then also mine and my husband's Jim Smith Fit Training. We would love to have you and help you um, take steps in order to meet your personal goals and needs in your healthy lifestyle in the exercise manner. So thank you all for tuning in. It's been great having you and if you have any questions you can always leave them down below and I will get back to them soon. Now I'm going to hop off here post this so you can either save it to your phone and print it out and have it handy. And then I'm going to get ready for dinner myself. Have a great evening. Talk to you soon. Bye.